Hi, Glowforge users and other laser users. Welcome to another Inkscape tutorial. So this is our second one. Um, so I'm so excited to see some people in the group now. And I thought I would post another tutorial of some other Inkscape basics that I found really helpful, especially when I was getting started. So um, last time we talked about text. So if you are still interested in learning about text, look back at our first tutorial. But with this one, we are going to talk a little bit about shapes. So this is really, really great because this can help you design signs. This can help you design earrings. This can help you design all these different types of things. And it makes it really, really easy in many ways. So we're really going to be working with these four icons this time. OK, um, so again, whenever we click one of those and make something, we always want to go back to the pointer or else you will be creating another box or whatever else you're clicking on so you can mute, move it using that. Okay, so let's just get started with um, some basic rectangle. So we have our basic rectangle here. And again, you wanna get this in, and again, I made that mistake myself. You wanna get this in the project space as much as possible. It's okay if it's not perfectly in there. Um, you can always adjust it in Glowforge if you feel comfortable with that. But something that I wanted to show you guys that I messed with for the longest time was actually getting the right size of things in Inkscape. So after you create your square, so again, you can do that really, really easily, and it doesn't have to be the right size. It doesn't have to be the right color. You can also change colors. So maybe you want two different colors for some reason, which we'll get to a few different reasons why you might want that later. Um, but you can do all of that. You can also change the stroke of things. So that's like the outside of it, which you might be able to see a little bit, not really. Um, but for right now, we'll just delete that one and we'll work with this rectangle to start with. Okay. So for this one, imagine we're going to use this on the basis of I am making a pair of earrings. The rectangle earrings are somewhat popular. Um, a lot of people like the rectangular earrings that I make. Now I would recommend you round the corners, but for the purpose of this demonstration, we're not going to do that. Um, but I, a lot of my earlier ones, I had the pointy corners and it wasn't too big of an issue. Acrylic can be really pointy on the edges. So I would recommend maybe for acrylic, especially don't necessarily do that. But you have your rectangle. Maybe you're satisfied with the height versus width of it, etc. Okay. Click outside if you want to, and then you can kind of see that. But sizing. When I first created earrings, I was like, oh, I'm so happy with them. And then I never got a consistent size. And so one way to do that is to actually format it in Inkscape. And I think that's a lot easier than formatting it in Glowforge every time you go in there. So you see up here, we have all of our different axes, but the big thing that I really am concerned about is the width and the height. Now, I do not work very well with millimeters, um, so I am actually gonna change that to inches because that is what I feel like I work better with. And if this was an earring, yeah, that really wouldn't work for an earring. So I am going to change that height to two inches, and then I will change the width, and you can mess around with this. Let's see, 0.5, that seems reasonable. So, and it looks a lot smaller, but you're like, how can I work with that? Well, one way to do that is to, again, um, if you watched the last video, you can zoom in on the different rectangles. So the way to do that is you hit control plus, and then if you hit control, or sorry, FN plus, or you can hit control and then the little scroll wheel on your mouse. So it's FN plus or control and the little scroll wheel to basically zoom in on your design. Same thing with zooming out, except it's FN plus minus or FN plus, okay? So, sorry, <coughs> had to sneeze. <laughs> so we have our rectangle here, perfect. Now something that you might want to do is you might wanna create an earring hole. So what I found for the most part is when you're creating earrings, your hole probably is fair to be around 0.1 inches in diameter. Um, I've done a little bit smaller than that, but too much smaller and your jump rings won't really fit through it. Um, of course, it depends on the jump rings you use, but I like around 0.1, 0 0.08 is usually kind of my go-to unless I really need it smaller for whatever reason. I very rarely do it bigger because then the design looks a little weird because you can very just clearly see a gap for whatever reason. So again, you can kind of create this design and you can see 
Now, the stroke. So the stroke is basically an outside marking. So, okay, we got that. And even if it looks like it's approximately the right amount, you might want to change that. So again, height and width, and then you have your perfect little circle. Now, if this wasn't a different color already, so if this was black, I would recommend going down here on your color palette, and it doesn't really mat matter what color you pick, but I would recommend you change it to a color, preferably a color that contrasts this. Because what we're gonna do now is we are going to bring this dot over, try not to reformat it, and I'm going to center it. And the other thing is you can also use your left, right, up, down buttons. So that's what I'm using right now on my keyboard. I'm not like moving it at all with my mouse. So I'm basically using my up and down, left and right. And sometimes that's really helpful. Um, but to get the precision I want, I usually use my mouse. And I, I prefer an actual mouse to just my like touchpad. So let's say I'm good with it right there. Now, this is the tricky part that I struggle with for a long time. You can leave it there. You can do that. And then you can basically just tell it to cut. That is one way you can do it. And for the longest time, that is what I did. But a better way to do it, to make sure you have this consistent and you can also copy this exact design and do this again and again, is you hit the dot and then you hit the shift key. And then both of them should be highlighted. So again, you click on the dot you click on the rectangle while holding the shift key, and then both of them should be highlighted. So from there, what you'll do is you'll go to path up at the top. And if you click on path to difference, that dot will disappear. And it's really cool because even, so you see, it's not even accessible to really touch that anymore. That basically just means that it's going to cut. So that means that you can resize this, you can do whatever you want, and the dot will not be there anymore, which is really, really cool. So the nice thing about this too is, and again, if you're not used to keypad controls, hit control and then C, control and then V, and then it copies and pastes things. It took me forever to figure that out too. Control C to copy, control V to paste, and then you have your other mirroring right there. And you can just do this as a blank, you can add designs, etc. But this is just one of the nice things that you can do with shapes. Um, something else that I've done before too, with a sign, and we'll just make this a really little sign for purposes just to kind of learn. So let's say this is going to be a two inch by two inch sign. Okay. And again, sorry, I keep saying I need to update because I just got a new computer. I keep updating it, but it doesn't care. And then one of the things you could do that I do sometimes is from here, I would copy and paste and then change the color of the circle. So again, whenever you're working with two things that you're going to create a difference in and you want to create like a hole in, you want to kind of change the color in that one. And then what I might do for this one is I'll change this to the size that I want it. I'm going to make this 1.5 so it looks a little bit more reasonable as a sign for this demonstration. And then I would drag this to the middle here. And then what I would do is you can highlight both this way. So you can just like drag it over and highlight it both that way. Or you can click on one, hold shift and click on the other. It does the same thing. So either way. And then again, you're going to go to path and then difference. And that is really, really cool because now that shape is gone. Now you have a perfect little circle and you can put other things in there as well. So that's one of the things that you can do with shapes. Now, one of the other amazing things that you can do with shapes, and I'll just take this earring and I will actually just take that. So you see that these two are, are completely different shapes. So the other thing that you can do is you can actually join shapes together. So let's say you wanted this part to hang off of your earring. So you wanted this part of the earring and then this is going to actually just hang off of that. Kind of an odd design, but hey, maybe it'd be cool. So you click on both or again, you scroll and highlight both and then you hit path to union. This will change the color 
And now this is one piece. So you can do differences, you can do unions. That's kind of some of the basics of shapes. These other shapes, and I'll scroll out a little bit here, and we'll go up and then scroll back in. You can do other shapes as well. So you can do like rounded shapes. So this one you can change to different things. So you can change it to more of a pentagon, you can change it to more of a uh, star, you can change it to how many corners you want it to have. Now mine is very rounded right now um, because I just did a design that way, but you can change that so it becomes less rounded. So you can see it's getting pointier. You can change other aspects of this so it can create really cool designs. So you can see that it's actually becoming more like a star like it's supposed to be in that particular example but there's tons of different things that you can do with this and create like really weird and interesting designs. You can randomize things and kind of create a random shape if you're into more abstract type stuff. So these are honestly just fun to kind of play around with sometimes. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you guys got something out of it. Um, I'd love to see some of the different shape creations that you make, but I love union and difference are like the best things ever for me. So I hope that you guys found this useful. And thanks a lot. I hope to see you guys next time.